Mike Zeno Ministries presents Called to Victory. Now here are your hosts, the senior pastors of Glory and Peace Church International, pastors Mike and Maria Efezino. Then he spake this parable. Said a man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came sought fruit thereon and found none. Came looking for fruit, found none there. Then said he unto the dress of the vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree. For three years I keep on coming here to get fruit from this fig tree. It has had three years to rethink. To reproduce. Cut it down, he says. Why cumbret it the ground? Wow. Why cumbret it the ground? Why cumbret it the ground? Why is it taking nourishment, nutrition, taking nutrients from the soil and producing nothing? Why is it hearing the word of God and producing nothing? Why is there no change here? Just cut it down. Why cumbret it? The ground. What does that word mean? That word katagel means that when you are cumbering, it means that you are destroying. It means that you are making void. In other words, the ground is giving you what you need, but you are not doing anything with what you have received. I said, Pastor, I thought we were starting from verse 10. Well, we're coming. There's nothing out of place in the word of God. Nothing. It says, you are shaming this ground. You are shaming this ground. In, in essence, you are shaming the word of God. You're sitting down hearing the word of God, no change taking place. You're shaming the word of God. You are hearing what you need to hear to bring about transformation in your life, but there's no transformation. You are not doing what you ought to do. You don't have a reason to be here. Now, that is a very serious word. The Lord is giving that parable. And he doesn't give parables just to, because he wants to just make it comment he's challenging us he's saying to us as a people listen my word that you've been studying reading what change is it bringing about in your life and why is there no change and why are you here I'm getting ready to get rid of you. Hmm. And the dresser said, he answering said unto him, thank God for intercessors. Lord, let it alone this year also. Till I shall dig about it, and dung it, in other words, fertilize it. And if it bear f fruit, great. And if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. In other words, I'm giving this, just, just another chance, another chance, another chance. I don't know who this word is for, but God keeps on saying, 
given you chance, I've given you chance, and 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 I've given you chance. But it's about to be time up. When God calls us to repentance, He's calling us to salvation. And He's saying, rethink. Think again. It is after He had laid down this foundation that we come to verse 10. And He was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. We don't know whether this was what he was teaching in that synagogue, but he was teaching something. And while he was teaching, the Bible says, And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity. The woman had a spirit of infirmity. 18 years. Now, this, this particular aspect of the Word of God is very striking because the, the word for that should be translated 18 is the word deca octo. 10 and 8 octo. But when you read in the language, the word that you see is a word for eight octo. Um, what is this? Why is the word not deca octo and it's octo, but it's translated 18? I pondered that in my spirit. Over and over and over again. God, what are you trying to say? Why is the translated word not the same? Why is it 18? As it was about the 18 people at the pool or the tower of Siloam. The tower of the saint. What are you trying to say to us? Why did the translators translate it as 18? When the word is octo, what? Who gave permission for this? Because that would be a wrong translation. Outright wrong. 18 and 8 are not the same. If the answer to a question is 18 and I wrote down 8, the marker of the paper will say, wrong. God, what are you trying to get to us? Eight teen ten and eight. Oh, I get it. Eight is the number of new beginnings. Ten. It's a number of completion. And God is saying, the completion of new beginnings. That's a scary thought. Because he's been talking to us about repentance. He's been talking to us about change. He's been talking to us about ending it. But there's a cry. Give us a new beginning. 
And I get it. All scripture is inspired of God. Even in the translation, there was an inspiration. 18. This woman had been held captive by the spirit of weakness. That's what infirmity is all about. To be infirm means that you are not firm, you are not strong, you, you do not have strength. The capacity, the ability to be whatever it is that you are called to be. And the word of God says this woman had been bowed down for 18 years. Bowed together. Bowed together. Whichever way you want to use it. And could in no wise lift up herself. She couldn't get herself up. She's stuck. Stuck. Bent over for 18 years. Whatever happened? What happened 18 years ago that caused this woman to bend over? Did she have an accident? She, did she go to bed, woke up in the morning and try to stretch like she normally would and bent over. Weakness had come over her and overwhelmed her that she could not straighten herself back up. Something had happened. Whatever it is, the Lord Jesus Christ this particular day in that synagogue was going to put an end to it. Just like the dresser of the vineyard, of the fig tree, and it's interesting, it's interesting that the Bible talks about a vineyard and talks about a fig tree in a vineyard. Oh. Looks, oh, it looks like it's misplaced. God says, no, nothing is misplaced. I am here to do a new thing in your life. What of God says... It was a spirit. It was a spirit. This wasn't physical. It was manifesting itself in a very physical way. But what was behind it was a spirit. A spirit of weakness. A spirit that destabilized. A spirit that stripped her of her glory, stripped her of her ability, stripped her of her capacity, stripped her of her personhood, stripped her. Tonight, this day, we declare that whatever that spirit is that has held anyone captive, that the power of God will shatter the stronghold of that spirit that we may think differently. Whatever it is that's come into the minds of people that have caused them to become weak in their minds. Weak in life. Weak financially. Weak in their marriage. Weak in their parenting. Weak in the lives of those that they're supposed to be strong in. Whatever happened? Whatever happened to the church? Why has the church become weak? Why have we become infirm? Whatever that spirit is, I believe that this day, the sixth day of the sixth month of 2021, that the God of heaven in his loving kindness and in his tender mercies will do a new thing in the lives of his people and that this spirit of infirmity shall be shattered, shall be broken, shall be removed from our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, there will be a divorcing of the spirit of infirmity from our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
The devil is a liar. This woman was bowed, bowed together, and cooled in no wise lift up herself. She didn't have the capacity to rise. Well, I thank God today that God has a word for us. Arise and be healed. Word of God says, And when Jesus saw her, when Jesus saw her, saw her. I like that word. I do. When Jesus perceived her, when Jesus took notice of her, I do. When Jesus became aware of her, beheld her, when Jesus understood <laughs> all of those words are that word I do. It was not just about just seeing her. It was about understanding her situation. Perceiving what her situation was. Correctly dissecting and discerning what her particular setting was what her real issue was. It was not an accident. She didn't fall off of her bed. No, a spirit. And I believe that it's a spirit that is blinding men and women, the word of God tells us, so that they cannot see. And behold the Christ. Recognize that they need salvation. Recognize their need. All you need to do is look at our world today. And all you can see is the confusion that has befallen so many. And you think, even for our leaders, how they're thinking. How are you thinking like that? What makes you think like that? The policies, the thought patterns, the strategies, That our leaders, political, spiritual, civic, all of them. And you wonder, how on earth are you thinking that crazy? What makes you think that way? Don't you see that we are perishing because of your thinking? The way you are approaching things, that we are getting weak because of His Spirit. When you take God out of uh, the schools, take it out of the public square, and replace God with everything else, every garbage, all kinds of nonsense. Why do you spend your time complaining about what is befalling you? What we need as a society is repentance. Unfortunately, the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation that with all the problems that hit the world, all the crises that hit the world, 
that the people did not even repent. But we will believe God that out of the many, a few will come to salvation because they rethink. This woman had a spirit of infirmity and the Lord saw her, identified what her issue was, and he called her to him. Says to her, come. He called and said unto her, woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. Woman, thou art Apollo. That's a very interesting word. Because what he says to her, he says, he says to her, Woman, you are separated from that infirmity, from that spirit. Woman, you are divorced from that spirit of infirmity. Woman, you are released from that spirit of infirmity. All that word apollo means all of those things. You're loosed. You're released. You're separated. You're divorced from that thing. That thing that's held you captive. I am divorcing you from it. I'm separating you from it. I am breaking you free from it. Woman, thou art loose. Today, may the power of God, the word of the living God, separate you and I from whatever it is that is keeping us in bondage, keeping us in the state of weakness. God has a different plan and a different purpose and a different dimension of grace that is releasing into your life, into my life, into our lives corporately so that we can walk in the freedom that only God can give to us because in ourselves, we cannot lift ourselves up. This is very clear. The word of God states it's very clear. She could not. She could in no wise lift up herself. The solution is not in me. The solution is not in you. The solution is in God. And his everlasting word. And today, my cry, and I believe your cry is this, O oh God, do something for me. Because I cannot. I have been trying and trying and trying and trying. I've tried and tried and tried and I've not been able to produce. I've not been able to stand. I've not been able to move ahead. I've not been able to accomplish purpose. God, help me. Help me. Help me. Is that your cry today? Or are you thinking doing five jobs is going to be the answer to your, to your financial breakthrough? Are you thinking pumping some weights maybe that's the answer maybe if I talk less or talk more that's going to be the answer no it's the spirit maybe if I protest that's going to be the answer no it's the spirit Maybe if I attack the media, that's going to be the answer. No, it's a spirit. If I do this, if I do that, no. She could in no wise 
by doing anything, lift up herself. Jesus said to the woman, come. Called her. And how did she come? She came exactly the way she was. And what did Jesus say to her? Straighten up, woman. Oh. <laughs> he says, woman, thou art loosed. You lose from thine infirmity. You lose from that which has held you in captivity and in bondage these 18 years. It is a new beginning for you. Whatever has happened has happened. It is a new beginning. Next time on Called to Victory. Nobody and nothing can stop the man or woman that has been called by God, who has responded to the call of God and heard what God said. And what God says to you, to me, woman, man, thou is you free. To receive a CD of today's program, send $10 to Mike Zeno Ministries, Post Office Box 3990. Winnipeg, Manitoba, R2W5H9. To order by Visa or MasterCard, call 204-582-6795. Request the program number on your screen. Thank you for watching Called to Victory with your hosts, Pastors Mike and Maria Efezino. This is a viewer-supported program. Thank you for your financial gifts. Call, write, or follow us online. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or watch us on our YouTube channel. This has been a Mike Zeno Ministries presentation.